Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I have a brand new pick a pile for you guys today. And today we are asking the question, where will you be in three years? So I know three years seems like an odd choice of a number to pick to ask, but I've already done recently a uh, one year prediction, a five year prediction, and a 10 year prediction. So I decided to choose just, you know, a random number. And um, actually, I don't think the number three is that random because it is like the Holy Trinity, the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. So I figured, you know, that'd be kind of fun. This is a timeless reading, so whenever you come across it is the time that you're meant to see it. So three years from whenever you're watching it. Um, Anyway, so here are our three choices for our piles. Pile number one is Fun Shine Bear from the Cheer from the Cheer Bears from the Care Bears. Cheer Bear is one of the bears actually, but um, pile number one is Fun Shine Bear, and we're all Care Bears today. It's all Care Bear choices. These are little figurines that I actually used to have when I was a kid, so I still have them. Um, pile number two here is Bedtime Bear. He's a little sleepy, so, you know, maybe he's your mood. <laughs> um, maybe this is your, your spirit Care Bear or something, but here's Bedtime Bear. And then we have um, the one I was trying to say apparently earlier, Cheer Bear. So this one is Cheer Bear. She looks like she's ready to get out her paintbrush and paint the world all in color. So she is pile number three. So pick the Care Bear that resonates with you. And we're gonna get started with pile number one, Funshine Bear. As for the other two, timestamps are down below. Hi, pile one. If you chose Funshine Bear as your Care Bear, then this is going to be the reading for you. And we are going to find out just what's going on for you, where you're gonna be three years from now. So, let's dig in, shall we? We got lots of juicy info here. We're gonna kick it off with the Crystal Unicorn Tarot. And you guys have the Four of Cups, the Eight of Pentacles, the Two of Wands, the Three of Cups, and the Ace of Pentacles. All right. From the Ice Cream Oracle, you guys have Apple Pie, Trust, Integrity, Comfort, Salted Caramel, Performances, Costumes, Mischief, and Green Tea, Work Ethic, Diligence, Meticulousness. From Loving Words from Jesus, because in my opinion, a Bible verse a day helps keep the bad vibes away, you guys have the Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name. He shall teach you all things. John 14, 26. From Amira's Love Oracle, you guys have the Ice King, Young Male, and Karma. And from the Divine Dog of Wisdom Oracle, let me just move some cards down a little bit here so we have enough room for everybody. Because I pulled quite a bit of cards here. Wanted to get a pretty crystal clear look at uh, your three years from now. We have victimhood, take responsibility, accountability, clean up your mess. Well, those two kind of go hand in hand. We'll just see what that's about. And protection, put your put up your guard. All right, you guys. So let's get a crack a lack in here and see what is going on. Um, hmm, hmm, hmm. 
Let's see, where shall we start? Well, I think we'll get started here with the Two of Wands. Um, I'm going to take a little look here in the Crystal Unicorn Tarot booklet just to make sure we're getting everything referenced, cross-referenced here. So the Two of Wands, the, it says in the book, this unicorn has visualized what he wants and is focusing on manifesting that vision. His left hand holds a staff of smoky quartz, which will help him achieve his goals. His right hand in his right hand holds the world, which gives him a glimpse of all the ideas yet to be discovered. Your ship of being your ship of prosperity has just sailed off, and you are waiting to see some moolah from the ideas you've sent out. Confidence, winning, and authority. Okay, so for for this card, what it kind of tells me is, you know, with confidence, winning, and authority, um, it's kind of like in a, in a way like manifesting things, like you're you're waiting for things to manifest. You know, you've put some good intentions out there. You've put some good ideas out there. You know, it could be in either love or your career or, you know, just maybe other goals that you have in mind. You know, maybe you're like trying to lose weight or something like that. But, um, you know, you're waiting for these good things to come in and you're feeling pretty positive about it. You're feeling good about it. So um, that's definitely a good way to kick things off. All right, we're going to hop into our cups now. Um, now, the three of cups, I know, automatically can imply one of two things. It can imply like a third party situation if you're dealing with a love situation, or it could simply just mean celebration, good times. Um, but we'll, we'll see if it's definitely celebration, good times as we kind of break this down a little bit further. Um, okay, so the Four of Cups. When the Four of Cups appears in a reading, it may mean you have a hard time accepting gifts or rewards. This card encourages you to move past your blocks and fears and accept the happiness and love that others are offering you. Learn how to be open and more receptive as you feel more satisfied when you do. Keywords, stubborn individuality and acceptance, which is interesting because in a sense, that's kind of like the very opposite kind of energy of the confidence of the two of wands. So here's, here's a possibility that I'm seeing with the combination of these two cards together for your three-year prediction from now. Um, so it's possible there could be something in your life that you're going to be working towards or wanting at that time. You know, it could be personal in love. It could be professional at work. You know, just like I said, whatever the goal is, whatever the dream is, um, there's something that you're wanting. There's something that you're working towards. But you're kind of double-minded about it. There's half of you that has confidence and excitement about it and believes that it can come together and it can work out. And there's another part of you that doesn't believe it, that, you know, won't necessarily accept the help from God, the universe divine, to push that forward. Even though, you know, you've sent those ideas, you've sent those intentions out there, you know, it's kind of like when God comes along and he presents you an opportunity, you're like, no, thank you. You know, it kind of reminds me, I don't know if you guys have ever heard this story. Um, and this is going to sound so cheesy, but there is this Hallmark movie um, called A Shoe Addict's Christmas. And in the movie, um, the guardian angel tells the main character this story about Christmas sleighs. And there's a man who is, um, he's up to his neck or whatever in snow. He's in the middle of a snowstorm and he's waiting for God to save him in the snowstorm so he doesn't die. And so a man in a sleigh comes by and offers the man a ride. And the man's like, no, 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 that's fine. 
um, you know, God's going to save me. I don't need a ride on your sleigh. So the man goes and carries on. Another man comes along in another sleigh, offers the same thing, offers him a ride, offers him help. And once again, the guy replies, no, 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 that's okay. I'm waiting for God. God is going to rescue me from the snowstorm. And a third one comes by, you guessed it, same scenario. Um, they offer him a lift on the sleigh, and once again, the man rejects them, saying, no, 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 it's okay, God's going to save me. Well, the man wound up dying. <laughs> He wound up going to heaven, and then when he got to heaven, he asked God, he was just like, I don't understand. I had faith. I had confidence in you. Like, why didn't you save me? Why didn't you help me? And God's reaction to him was, I sent the sleigh three times. So God was there. God was giving him the offers, like in this card. God was giving him those offers, but every time the offers came along... You know, it kind of just went over the dude's head. And that could be something that you're dealing with three years from now. Um, I know that's kind of a long explanation, but that's literally the story that popped into my head that I really felt was, was needed to be said and a good correlation to what's happening between these two cards. And now I'm starting to see how the Three of Cups does play in. Because if you do... If you do take this cup, if you do take the cup in the Four of Cups, if you take those offers rather than shun them away, then you're going to have a time of celebration and you're going to be celebrating what winds up coming in. And when it comes in, like it may not be how you expect it, it may not um, look like what you thought it was going to. It may not happen where you wanted it to or when you wanted it to, which is why there may be a part of you that may be really tempted to just push it away. But don't because it's probably going to be way better than you could possibly imagine and it'll take you into this new season of like fun and bliss and that kind of thing. Um, let's check in on your Eight of Pentacles here and see what's happening in the Pentacle action because you got a couple of those too. Okay, for your Eight of Pentacles, according to the Crystal Unicorn Tarot book, it says, like the unicorn working hard and perfecting his Pentacles, you have totally figured out your craft and you are getting to the heart of your life's work. You've been the, the, you've been the apprentice and now you are the master. With dedication and drive, you are on top of your game. Everyone knows this and you should be super proud. There's always more to learn and more things to grow. So continue reaching for the stars. Keywords, engaged, perfection, diligent. So um, another reason why I think that this is going to work out for you um, is because you've been working hard at this. And that's, you know, bottom line what the Eight of Pentacles is all about. It's about hard work, persistence, perseverance, um, pushing through, you know, getting up, dressing up, showing up, even when you don't feel like it. It's that kind of thing. So I do believe your hard work is going to pay off and it's going to wind up leading in to new offers, valuable new offers coming your way. Um, you know, once again, it depends what this thing is here that you're working towards. You could be working on a relationship. You could be working on a career path, you know, whatever it may be. But there's going to be a valuable offer that's going to come along out of that. So that offer, like I said, it may not look like what you think it's supposed to look like. It may not happen and unfold in the way that you would ever imagine it to. So don't push it away just because it doesn't come in the packaging that you think it should. But it's still going to be exactly what you want. It's going to be the thing that you desire 100%. And if you accept that, you're going to have such a beautiful, blessed and blissful season of celebration with friends and family and all kinds of good stuff. So that's what I see happening for you in the tarot. Um, 
And now I can definitely see how victimhood and accountability actually play a part in it. Because here's the thing, you guys. Um, when this opportunity presents itself and, you know, if you try to push it away because it's not coming in the form that you think it's supposed to, there's a chance you could get tempted to get into this victim mentality where you're just like, oh, nothing ever works out for me. Nothing ever goes the way that I want it to. Woe is me. Lo and behold, blah, 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 blah. Um, but don't do that. Don't, don't slip into that because the truth is, um, what you're being offered here is a good thing. You know, it is that valuable new beginning, that valuable start of something that you're waiting for, whether it's in a relationship or your career or a move or, you know, whatever it is, whatever this new chapter is. So just because, like I said, just because it comes dressed up a little different than you originally thought, don't be a victim about it. Don't be like all boo-hoo. Instead, take accountability, take accountability, take responsibility kind of a thing. And, you know, as long as you do that, which I think you're totally capable of doing, I mean, you're already a hard worker. The Eight of Pentacles definitely shows that you are hardworking. You are someone who can and does take accountability. Um, so considering that is what is going on, um, like I said, you know, take, take the accountability, clean up your mess <laughs> from, you know, this little situation here. And like I said, you're going to be able to step into that season of celebration, but you're not going to be able to do it unless you, um, do that. All right. So let's see, what else do we have going on here? Which is funny, you know, eight of pentacles, hard working. We have green tea, work ethic, diligence, meticulousness. So I feel like the green tea card here just simply describes and verifies pretty much the eight of pentacles here. It's pretty much just confirmation that, you know, you are a hard worker, that you're going to be working hard three years from now, and that you are going to see that hard work pay off. I think that you definitely need to trust. Um, that's for sure. You know, especially when things arrive to you that you don't think it's supposed to come the way that it is, you know, just trust and have faith like this unicorn here, um, you know, waiting for its good intentions to come into the clearing. Um, you know, same kind of thing. Just trust, um, remain in integrity and have comfort in knowing that God has it, which is funny. We have comfort. And then your Jesus card, it says the comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things. So, you know, when you do have doubts, when you do have fears, and this is just good, valuable information to have, whether it's right here, right now, or three years from now, or anytime. Um, you know, anytime you feel overwhelmed and you're questioning things, you know, you can always go to God. You can always go to Jesus. Um, you know, he is there for you. He wants to comfort you. He wants to help you. And, um, and that's the whole thing. You know, a lot of people don't understand sometimes like, you know, if Jesus was all, you know, big and mighty and powerful, you know, why did he leave? Why didn't he just stay here on earth? Well, he left so he could leave behind his Holy Spirit. And that's what we have. We have the Holy Spirit to, um, you know, help us, lead us, and guide us. Okay, so we have a few other things going on here. Um, in your love situation, I see a couple different things going on. Um, number one, you could be dealing with someone who is a young male or maybe you, the viewer, maybe who's watching this right now as a young male. But um, since I know it's primarily females who do come to these videos, it's most likely um, a young male that you may be involved with uh, three years from now, but you could be dealing with some challenges with him at that time. Um, you could be clearing out some karma 
dealing with this person. So there's a couple possibilities here. Um, this guy, he could either be your twin flame and you guys may be clearing some karma out so you guys can come together and have union and close out these contracts or he straight up could be a karmic. And I think it's, you know, it's going to vary from person to person. Um, and, you know, you'll know. Like, usually if it's a karmic, it's something that's unhealthy. It's something that's toxic. It's something that doesn't make you feel good. If it's your twin flame, you know that it's worth it and you know that it's healthy. Um, but, you know, that doesn't mean that you don't have your challenges that you have to push through and work through. And one of those challenges dealing with this dude is he may be the ice king. So um, I don't feel like that means that he doesn't love you or he doesn't care about you or he doesn't have any warmth in his heart for you, but I do feel that in terms of the way he communicates and the way he delivers things towards you at that time, he may be kind of cold. Um, he may not be that communicative to you at that time, which I understand can be very frustrating, but this is very realistically something that could be going on three years from now. Um, and, you know, if he is being icy, if he, if he is being cold, you can bet your money it's tied to this karma of whatever's going on that you guys need to clear up. And, you know, the karma, there's so many different ways that could be, you know, it could be things tied to this lifetime, it could be things tied to the previous lifetime, you know, it could be getting over past hurts and pains from previous relationships, it could be getting over addictions, it could be, um renewing your mind and having brand new mindsets it could be a whole ton of different things um but yeah so that could be something that you could be dealing with three years from now and for most of you i feel that this guy probably is your twin flame and because of that that's why you also have the protection card and it's very important in twin flame dynamics especially to protect your connection um, because not everyone's going to understand it. Not everyone's going to get it. And there are going to be people out there who are not going to have your best interest at heart and who are going to try and tear you down and they're going to be haters and there's going to be jealousy and all kinds of unreasonable things that make absolutely no sense. So, um, I think it's really important for you guys to protect your connection, protect this relationship. Even if you're not talking to this person, um, you know, pray for them. Prayer is the best thing you can do. And there's this quote that, you know, it says, um, if, you can't, if you can't get someone off of your mind, um, pray for them. It's something like that. Um, so, yeah, you definitely should be praying for this person. You know, kind of like... Like, I see this as, like, you know, like a mother and, and baby bulldog or whatever. So it's, like, be like the mother to your connection. You know, protect it. Protect it like a little, little tiny baby. So um, I definitely see that when it comes to that situation. <clears throat> um, and let's see. With performances, costumes, and mischief, I feel like this card is basically kind of like a little bit of a forewarning for you guys maybe um that there could be people around you in your life three years from now who may be wearing masks they could be trying to cause mischief in your life they're not you know being authentic and upfront and real with you um which like I said is just another reason why I feel like you need to protect this connection because there could be people around you at that time who claim they are supportive of your relationship, but they're really not, and they're kind of like backstabbers. So um, I would definitely say be careful of that. Um, be careful of these pranksters, basically. And um, yeah, so that's kind of what I see going on in your love situation. Now, um, the stuff that happened up here with the tarot cards and you know how we were talking about earlier at the beginning of your reading how you know you've put out these good intentions and you shouldn't reject what comes your way so you can um receive 
this new opportunity and a time of celebration. This still could refer to your love situation. Um, one of the reasons it could be so difficult is because he is being the Ice King, and that may be why you don't expect things to come out the way that it does. Um, even though you are putting out those intentions that you want it to. And, um, you know, obviously with that karma and everything that you guys have to clear up. But it's also, there's also a possibility that the situation could still be a career-related thing too. So I feel like it's going to be kind of half and half for you guys. Like for some of you guys, um, the tarot part up here is going to be more so career-related. And the relationship stuff is more so down here. For you, but for others of you, like the whole thing is definitely like a relationship thing. And, you know, especially if it's, you know, dealing with this young male or whatever, like don't be a victim dealing with the situation with this person three years from now. And, you know, clean up your side of the street when it comes to this relationship because that's probably tied to a lot of this karma. And, you know, when we're in a relationship with anybody, and this this is not just for twin flames, you know, this could be um, a relationship with a family member or a friend or, or anybody, you know, they're responsible for their side of the street, but we're responsible for our side of the street too. You know, it's, it's give and take. So, um, yeah, so don't play the victim in this situation because that's just going to feed into any karma that's there. You know, take accountability for your part. You know, if you're having fears, if you're having doubts, if you're being insecure, if you're trying to control outcomes, those are things you have to take accountability for and not play the victim in. Um, so that's definitely something that's really good to remember. But I do believe that your hard work is going to pay off in the situation for sure. That new offer is going to come, and as long as you don't ignore it because it looks a little bit different than you expected, you're going to hit your time of celebration in love and life and career and all that stuff. So you guys have a very interesting um, scenario, I think, playing out in three years. It's kind of like a roller coaster. Like You guys are going to have a lot of ups and downs and everything in between, and you know, really what it comes down to is you are in control of your own life. And if you want this situation to go well, it totally can. You can have the three cups of celebration, um, but it's, it's going to take that work. And, you know, I think you guys are capable, but you have to make the choice is what it comes down to. So anyway, I hope that made sense for you guys and it resonated, helped you out a little bit. Um, but that's what I see happening for you guys three years from now. Anyway, if the message did not flow, of course, just let it go. But if it did, please let me know. Leave a comment down below. I would love to hear from you guys. Also, if you would give this video a big thumbs up, that definitely helps me out a lot. And um, feel free to subscribe, hit that notification bell so you know of future videos when they are coming your way. Um, otherwise, thank you guys for spending a little bit of time here with me today and checking out my channel and chilling here with this reading right now. Um, I hope you guys have an amazing day. Keep sparkling. I am sending you lots of hugs and much love. Hi, Pile 2. If you chose bedtime bear, then this is going to be the reading for you and we are going to find out where you're going to be three years from now. All right, we're going to start things here with the crystal unicorn tarot and dive right in. All right, you guys got the knight of pentacles, the chariot, the five of cups, the moon, and the Hierophant. From the Ice Cream Oracle, you guys have Strawberry, Immunity, Vitality, and Radiance. Grape, Prophecies, Spirit, Magic. And Butter Pecan, Reason, Market, Cell. 
from Loving Words from Jesus, because in my opinion, a Bible verse a day helps keep the bad vibes away. You guys got. Seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Matthew 6, 33. From Amira's Love Oracle, you guys have Twin Flame, oh boy, Brunette Female, and Young Female. And from the Divine Dog Oracle, you guys got Boredom, Time to Sit and Stay. Surrender, let it go, and tenderness, gentle, loving care. All right, you guys. So let's have a look at what is happening with you guys. All right. So right off the bat, um, the first thing I want to dive into is kind of what I see going on in your love situation here because it was like the first thing that just jumped out to me, and I'm sure it jumped out to you as well. And... Yes, indeed, chances are you are a twin flame, um, which totally makes sense. Um, so yeah, I think that this is just confirmation that you are one. Um, you know, you're, you may be involved with one right now as you're watching this, but um, even if you're not involved with one right now, three years from now, you definitely will be. So um, you definitely have the twin flame dynamic going on with somebody. We also have brunette female and we have young female. So basically a young brunette. Um, so I feel like this is confirmation saying that you, the person who's watching this, is either a young brunette or um, your twin flame, the person that you're asking about in reference to, is a young is a young brunette female. So that's kind of what I'm picking up from that. Um, that you either are the young brunette female or the person in reference to with your twin flame is. So um, that's number one right off the bat. And I feel like the first thing that you guys need to know dealing with your twin flame three years from now, um, well, it seems like you guys may be going through a little bit of stuff with them because I feel like three years from now you guys are gonna kind of be a little bit bored but the reason why like I kind of look at this as like patience in a sense um, there may not be a lot of forward movement happening between you and your person at that time um, you know if you guys are together for example, you may be looking for the next level of commitment and maybe he's just not going there. Maybe he's just not like getting down on one knee and proposing and you want him to. Or um, if you guys are separated at that time altogether, you may be waiting to reunite and you may be waiting to get back together and he's just like not showing up. He's just not reaching out or doing the things that you'd like him to. So it kind of puts you in this state of being bored and um yes you do need to sit and stay which I think is a level of patience but I would say don't don't do it in a way of being bored you know still fill your life with activities things of value um you know be of assistance be of help to others um I think that's going to be really important you know, especially in these twin flame situations, you know, I, I know a lot of people get frustrated with patients and I, I get it. I am one of them. I am not someone who is great with patients at all, but I think what you need to do is look at it as you need to be actively waiting. And that doesn't mean that you just, you know, sit around on your ass all day, doing nothing, waiting for your phone to light up with a text from him or something. It means that you go out there and you live your life. You pursue your dreams. You pursue your interests. I mean, aside from this person, you know, don't you have other goals and other passions? You know, like, 
if your passion is animals, for example, like this is an animal card, then go out there and work with animals and help animals. Um, if your passion is doing some kind of creative work, like art, create art. If your passion is like doing spiritual stuff like readings, do readings. Um, if your passion is writing, write. If your passion is doing music, do music. There's so much stuff that you can do and it doesn't like take that person away out of your heart or anything. If anything, they become more of like a muse to you. They're still like a part of your work and a part of what you're doing, but you're no longer just like sitting in the mud, basically. Um, you're actively waiting. Maybe you're not interested in going out and seeing other people, and that's totally okay. But at least like see your friends, have a social life in that sense of the word, um, you know, go out there and be a productive member of society, basically. And I feel like, you know, you're also going to be have to be doing a lot of surrendering and a lot of letting go, which is not unusual. Once again, in these twin flame dynamics, it is all about surrender. It's all about not doing it our way, but doing it God's way, basically, because you know what? Our way sucks. Like, you know, when I come up with a bright idea, it blows up in my face. But if it's God's idea, it usually goes like a million percent better than I ever would have dreamed that it would have. And I know it can be really hard to, to discern and figure out, is it me or is it God? Is it me or is it God? Well, the best piece of advice I can give you guys with that is to follow peace. Because if you have internal peace on the inside of you and it's not like a struggle or an effort or anything, then that's probably God. But if you're trying to force something, if you're trying to make something happen, that's probably more like you. And obviously forcing things, making things happen is not what you're supposed to be doing because you're supposed to be surrendering, you know, and that's a, that's another thing that's a struggle of just being a human being is a lot of the times we want to have control. And three years from now, this is going to be a season where you're not going to be able to have the control and you're just going to have to surrender, let go, let God. Um, but I do believe that there's a lot of tenderness, a lot of gentle, loving care between you and your person, obviously. Um, and you guys almost could be like polar opposites, kind of like this card. You know, we have this giant German Shepherd dog and this teeny tiny baby kitten. But look at how that German Shepherd just loves up on that kitten. And that may be you and your twin flame. You know, you guys can be total opposites like that. Maybe there's an age difference. Maybe there are cultural differences. Maybe there's physical distance between you guys. Um, it could be a whole bunch of different things, but there is this tender, loving care between the two of you. And, you know, surrendering and letting go is a part of love. You know, like love is not controlling. So, um, you know, that is a part of the deal. And I think you're going to be learning a lot about love, like good, healthy types of love at that time. And, um, you know, it's going to be challenging, but I think you're going to be able to do it. And you're going to be okay. Oh, as I yawn, absolutely out of nowhere. Um, my sleep schedule has been totally like wackadoodle, you guys. So <laughs> forgive me if I'm yawning out of nowhere. Um, but anyway, I do believe that um, you're going to know that this is a twin flame situation because we have prophecies, spirits, and magic here. And that's the thing, like a twin flame dynamic is pretty magical. It's very unique. And I feel like you're naturally going to intuitively just be able to tap into that. So, um, you know, you're going to know that it's a twin flame situation if you don't know already. And, um, you know, with spirits, you know, that's just kind of reminding me of like, how you guys need to basically go to the Holy Spirit, like continue to pray up, go to God, that kind of thing, because that's going to be super helpful in your situation for sure. You know, seek ye first the kingdom of God 
and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you so as long as you're putting god first as long as you're making him number one you know your twin flame anything else that you'd like to have in your life it can be yours but god has to come first okay so getting into a few other things here we got a couple more ice cream oracle cards to go through and of course your tarot so um, I definitely feel for you guys the big message here is a love three years from now. I'm not really seeing anything in the career department going down. But in the process of you guys surrendering and being patient through this process, there are probably going to be moments where you're going to feel like all is lost. Because the Five of Cups is all about, you know, like, look at this unicorn. He's looking at these three cups in front of him that have spilled over, and he doesn't look happy about it. He is upset. And you may have these moments dealing with your person where you're going to see, like, all the ways you guys have screwed it up, all the ways that maybe you have felt you have screwed up in this relationship, and, you know, you're, you're going to see just, like, all the failures, and you're not going to notice, you're not going to turn and see that there are still two cups over here still two perfectly good cups and you know this is just proof here that your situation is going to be okay because there are more opportunities waiting for you you just haven't fully realized it yet and the other interesting thing about the five of cups is you know they are spilt cups it kind of reminds me of the expression crying over spilt milk and i do feel that a lot of the times when you're going through these struggles with this person, it is kind of like those crying over spilt milk type of situations. And that's gonna be because you guys are gonna be working through a lot of illusions here with the moon. And that's what the moon is about. The moon is all about illusions. It's about not seeing things clearly for what they are. Um, you know, it's about things being hidden. And I feel like, you know, for you, in this season of your life, you're going to be breaking down a lot of uh, mindsets, a lot of mental strongholds that have been negative and that have been holding you back for probably even longer than you realize. And, um, you know, those negative mental strongholds, those are the illusions. So you're going to be working on breaking those for sure. So that way then you can notice your two other cups that are here. And a lot of those illusions have been built upon uh, traditions and values that you've had with the Hierophant because that's what the Hierophant is all about. The Hierophant is about beliefs, traditions, um, you know, it could be religious beliefs, you know, a whole bunch of different things. But I feel like this is basically saying with the moon being here that your, your belief system has been a little off kilter. It's been a little wacky. So it's gonna need a little bit of adjustment. So you're gonna be adjusting that three years from now, which is not abnormal when you're in a twin flame situation. A lot of things get adjusted. And that's the whole thing. Like everyone always, you know, talks about alignment when it comes to twin flames. You know, alignment is like a very trendy word when it comes to twin flames. And, uh, you know, when you fall out of alignment, it needs to be adjusted. And that's not just, you know, in correlation to twin flames. Like, think about it in, in quite physical, literal terms. Like, if you're driving your car and you go off-roading or you go and you hit a pothole or something like that, and if your car isn't ready for that, you're going to knock your car out of alignment and next thing you know, like your tires are all wonky and weird. And then you have to take your car in somewhere to get the tires realigned because they're not like matching up and running on the road properly the way that they're supposed to. And it's the same way with a twin flame situation. You know, we hit potholes in life and that knocks us out of alignment and we got to get knocked right back in. So... I feel like you guys are going to have some mental strongholds here that you're going to need to be breaking through. No more believing in these illusions um, because your illusions are deceiving you and thinking that all is lost when it really isn't because, you know, you've got these other opportunities. But I do believe 
once you guys work through that, once you guys do get past that, I believe that your person is going to come to you. And he's going to come to you um, with a very valuable offer in ways that are like unbelievably good, unbelievably amazing. And the reason why I say that is number one, we have the Knight of Pentacles. So the Knight of Pentacles is basically your person. And the Knight of Pentacles, you know, here he is. He's moving along, moving towards you. Um, but the Knight of Pentacles is also very slow. Um, it's that earthy energy and it takes its time. And I understand because that can be very annoying, can be very frustrating, <laughs> but um, he is the one who always finishes. He is the one who always completes things in fullness and wholeness. So he will make it there. He will cross that finish line. You're just going to have to continue surrendering and having patience until he gets there. But he is going to get there because... We also have the chariot, and the chariot is that forward movement. It's going towards those dreams. It's going towards those desires. It's, you know, getting in there and getting going. So he is going to do that. So I do believe that for you guys, the Nine of Pentacles and the chariot represents your person and that he is going to come forward. But before that happens... Like I said, you guys, you ha you have some of your own things to work out here. You got to, you know, really think about what you're thinking about with your belief systems. You got to figure out what's true and what's not with the moon and realize that you still have other opportunities there that it's not all over. So with reason, market, sell... Um, the very first word that pops out to me from Butter Pecan is reason, because whenever we're, we're reasoning in our mind, it's like, it's not a good thing. <laughs> um, whenever we're reasoning things, it's like we're rationalizing things, we're trying to either talk ourselves into something, or we're trying to talk ourselves out of something, which is basically what marketing and selling is all about. You know, you're trying to convince someone to like buy a product or, you know, whatever it may be. And there may be a lot of that internal dialogue inside of your own mind when it comes to this person, where you're trying to convince yourself of something. But the thing is, in a twin flame situation, you don't need to convince yourself of anything because these situations are, you know, they're divinely orchestrated and they're divinely directed. So you don't need to reason or sell anything that comes from God that is straight up divine. So that may be a part of one of the things that you need to work through in terms of those mental strongholds is your reasoning and you know reasoning is not good um sometimes you just have to let things be in your mind mentally and um even if it doesn't make any sense to you even if it sounds totally cuckoo for cocoa puffs sometimes you just have to let it be um let it flow and then with immunity vitality and radiance i see this card and um you know, basically, I feel like it's pretty much saying that you guys have the vitality, you guys have the strength, the endurance to get through this situation. And I understand if you're coming to this reading and you're like, okay, I already know who my twin flame is. You know, maybe you're currently in separation with them right now and you're like, oh my gosh, you're telling me I'm still going to be dealing with this crap three years from now? Because this is a three years from now reading. Um, well, number one, just know that um, anything can change. I, I firmly believe that whatever comes out in the cards or like with a pendulum or anything like that, whatever comes out, it comes out because that's like the state of the current energy and that's like the current course that you're on based on the current decisions that you're making. But those things can always change. They can always um, change faster or they can change slower based upon our decisions, based upon our mindsets. Like you could start changing these mindsets now and you know, 
you may not even have to deal with all this for three years from now. You could accelerate things. Um, but the, t the choice is totally yours. Regardless, it does seem like you guys have some work to do in terms of defeating illusions and changing some of your belief systems. That's regardless. And maybe you guys are still going to be working through that three years from now. It is a possibility, but the ball is in your court to change that if you want to change that. Um, and with radiance here, I feel like that's just confirmation that your person does see you as someone who is radiant and beautiful. So you guys can definitely do it. And like I said, I understand the frustration. I totally get it. I feel like you guys do have the option to accelerate this, but it's up to you. I just don't want to see you guys get stuck in a rut, especially if this is where you're currently at. You know, you don't have to be in the same place three years from now. You can push things forward, but the work starts with yourself. You know, you got to get real with yourself. You got to do some surrendering. You got to do some being patient. You got to start giving up the control. You got to start looking at your belief systems and seeing what is healthy and what is not. Break through the illusions. And, you know, the more you work on that, the more your Knight of Pentacles can get into his chariot and come your direction. And, um, and also, another good thing to remember, too, is it is not all just on you. You know, there is your person. You know, he needs to be working on himself, too. And usually the guys are a few steps behind the girls when it comes to this stuff. And I don't know if you guys, you know, ever heard this growing up, but, you know, my mom always used to tell me that, you know, oh, boys are, you know, they're always a couple years behind girls in terms of maturity. And, you know, that's still true. It's still true to this very day. So, you know, you're going to have to be patient for him because, um, you know, he's probably going to be behind you in terms of this growth and this development and this kind of work and everything. But, you know, that's not his fault. Give him love. Give him grace. It's totally fine. But remember, there is his part too, and he may be slow. So, you know, just because you're doing your work doesn't mean that automatically accelerates his work. I'm sure it helps, but there is still his side to contend with, too. You know, so in the meantime, the best thing you can do, you guys, is seek God, put God first, and he's going to take care of this. He's going to give you the desires of your heart. Your dreams are going to come true. So that's what I see going on dealing with you guys for where you're gonna be at three years from now. I do feel like some of you are probably currently in this situation right now, um, which was why it kind of came out the way it did. But I just I just wanna see you guys, um, get, I, you know, there's a part of me that's impatient for you. Like, I wanna see you live your happily ever after, and I wanna see you guys get there um, quicker too. So that's, you know, why I'm saying just really Examine yourself and you're going to know, you're going to know what it is that you need to do for you. But, you know, I'm in your corner. I'm rooting for you guys, whatever it is you need. I'm here for you. So that's basically that. Anyway, if this message did not flow, of course, just let it go. But if it did help you at all, please let me know. Leave a comment down below. Even just a simple emoji totally helps me. Give this video a big thumbs up. That always helps me out a lot. And feel free to subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you know of future videos when they are on the way. Otherwise, you guys, thank you for just stopping by, hanging out with me a little bit today, a little bit of your time spent with me. I really appreciate that. Keep sparkling. I'm sending you lots of hugs and much love. Hi, Pile 3. If you chose Cheer Bear from the Care Bears, then this is going to be the reading for you, and we are going to find out where you're going to be three years from now. All right, we're going to kick things off here with the Crystal Unicorn Tarot, and you guys have the Ten of Cups. Well, that's a pretty good start. The King of Cups strength, 
the Nine of Swords, the Devil. All right. We got an interesting combination there of energy. I was like all excited. I saw the Ten of Cups and then I saw the Nine of Swords and I'm like, okay, well that's a switch, but we'll figure this out. From the Ice Cream Oracle, you guys have Chocolate, Purpose, Depth, and Roots. Mango, Attraction, Intrigue, Sensuality. And Maple, Kindness, Friendship, Support. From Loving Words from Jesus, because in my opinion, a Bible verse a day helps keep the bad vibes away. You guys got heal the sick that are that are therein, and say unto them, the kingdom of God is come nigh unto you. Luke ten nine. All right. From Amira's love oracle, you guys have new love, past life and children. And finally, from the Divine Dog of Wisdom cards, you have Instinct, Trust Your Intuition, Rest, Take a Time Out, and Playfulness, Just for Fun. All right, you guys. So here's what I see happening for you guys. I feel like three years from now is going to be um, an interesting time of transition for you, actually. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of interesting stuff going on here. So we are going to crack into this here and take a look at it. Um, I just want to double check here. I'm just skimming through the Crystal Unicorn Tarot booklet. Um, okay, let's let's have a look at your Nine of Swords here because this was the one that tripped me up at first because I was like, oh boo, why is this one here? Okay, Nine of Swords. There are things in your life right now that you can't control and it is giving you nightmares or messing with your sleep. You are being... Sorry, that was my phone. I was getting a text message, and yes, it is Edward Cullen's voice. That is my text message. <laughs> anyway, I was reading. Um, you are being too hard on yourself and stressing the small stuff. This card tells you to wake up and see the truth of your situation. Despair can keep you from allowing opportunities to flow, which in turn stops you from achieving your goals. So let it go. Find your inner Zen unicorn. Keywords, sleepless, despair, anxiety. Okay. So this is pretty interesting. All right. So I'm definitely picking up love vibes from you guys today. Um, all right. So here's what I see that's going to be happening, which is pretty interesting. All right. So three years from now, I do believe that you guys are going to be in union with your person. And your person here is the King of Cups. And the King of Cups, um, he, doesn't, he doesn't necessarily, he's not like overly vocal about um, his love when he expresses it, but he does have a lot of love. I mean, he's the King of Cups. Cups is all about emotion. So he does have a lot of emotion for you. It's deep emotion. You know, it's in the depths of those waters kind of emotions. So, you know, I feel like three years from now, you're definitely going to be with your King of Cups and he's going to have a lot of love for you. And I do feel that the two of you together are going to have your Ten of Cups together, meaning you guys are going to have, you know, Whatever that ideal life is that you want, um, you know. Hold on tight, spider monkey. Yes, thank you, thank you. That was a reminder. Anyway, um, yeah, but whatever that ideal life looks to you, whether it's just the two of you united, living your life together, or maybe having pets together, it could be um, getting married and having a family. 
um, having children, which I do believe children are in the forecast because you guys have the children card, but I'll get into that in a minute. Um, but anyways, I do see you guys as having like that ideal life, whatever it is. Um, you're going to have that picture perfect, happily ever after, you know, rainbows in the sky type of beautiful life with your king of cups three years from now so that's amazing that's wonderful i believe that you know being together with your person of course is bringing you all kinds of strength it's um it's given you all kinds of strength as it is already the journey that you've already been on dealing with this person so i believe that there's a lot of strength there and um yeah as for the Nine of Swords and the Devil, now, this is what I'm picking up with these two cards because, you know, the other three are pretty good and it's like, well, gee, why is there Devil energy and why is there the Nine of Swords if there's all this good stuff happening? Here's why. So, all of that good stuff is definitely happening. However, it's all about the mind frames, you guys. It's all about those mental strongholds. It's all about what's happening in our minds. Now, yes, if you're on a twin flame journey, if you have a soulmate or something, you know, there's definitely a certain amount of crap that you go through before you are like fully reunited and everything. But just because you come into union with someone, that doesn't mean that your relationship is perfect. You know, you guys are still a couple. You guys are still in a very real 3D relationship. Um, you guys are still dealing with um, issues and problems that everybody does. You know, it could be financial issues or communication issues or, you know, whatever the case may be. You know, just because you're a twin flame or just because... Um, you know, you've already worked on yourself to a certain degree doesn't mean you hit union and it's perfect and then you never fight again. Like, you're not, you're still human beings, you're not robots. So, I, <laughs> I do believe that even though there's going to be all this wonderful, beautiful stuff happening here, you're going to have temptation to not always see it that way. So, the devil here is basically you being tempted to not always see it as the Ten of Cups. Even though you have the Ten of Cups, you're going to have moments where it's like, and it's going to, I feel like it's going to be stupid stuff, you guys. I really do. I feel like it's going to be stupid stuff. Like, it's going to be things like, um, maybe you asked him to do the dishes the previous night, and then you get up in the morning, and you go downstairs, and you look at the kitchen sink, and there's a big mess there. And he didn't do them at all, even though, you know, he was like, oh, yeah, I'll take care of the dishes. And then you're going to be pissed off. And then you're going to get, like, all stressed out and kind of cry over it like the Nine of Wands. It's stupid crap like that, you guys. It's seriously, it's like nothing. But I feel like you're going to have these moments of temptation where it's almost like you're not even very grateful for, um how far you've come or what you've been given like there's going to be that temptation to um yeah just not have that gratitude even though it should be there obviously now I'm not saying that you guys are going to fall into that temptation and that you're definitely not going to be grateful it's just a temptation that doesn't mean that you have to fall for it um but there could be those moments where, you know, you may get frustrated with your person or you may get frustrated with whatever's going on in your lives at that time and um, you may be making a bigger deal out of it than what it really is and kind of cry over the spilt milk and have some stress and anxiety and sleepless nights and that kind of thing, which is absolutely pointless. So, um, you know, don't do not do that. If you guys are being given your, your Ten of Cups and you're with your king of cups, you know, you have the strength to overcome any silly temptations of being aggravated with basically, you know, regular life. Because, you know, that's the funny thing. You know, you think about like fairy tales and stuff like that. And, you know, the story ends with they all lived happily ever after. But you never know what actually happens with happily ever after. 
And, you know, believe it or not, like, there are days where, you know, maybe Cinderella got pissed off because Prince Charming didn't take out the garbage or something stupid like that. So, you know, there's still very much those real-life situations you have to deal with. And, you know, I am 110% down with the depth of things and the spirituality of things and how things there are so much more things happening beneath the surface, but sometimes there legit are things on the surface that you just have to deal with. <laughs> so, you know, don't, don't be upset about it. Um, but I think it's important to trust your instinct because I feel like you guys are going to know deep down inside that you really are blessed. You're going to know that. You're going to know that you really are blessed and that, you know, whatever trivial arguments or differences come up with your person you can put it to rest it's not a big deal you know it's not the end of the world you know so what maybe he likes to you know play his video games and that kind of thing you know he may not exactly like you going out and you know spending a little bit too much money at target or something like that um but you know trust trust your instinct i feel like you know deep down inside that you know, he's a good guy and that you guys have worked through a lot of crap. You guys have had a lot of strength to work through things and that you guys are, are okay. So trust your instinct. You're going to be okay. And instead of getting like all wound up and all anxiety ridden and everything, instead, just rest just rest and enjoy life. Just relax, you know. Don't be such a control freak. Don't be so, like, type A or anything like that. Just rest. Just enjoy, you know. This is supposed to be a season of um, reaping a harvest, a, a season of blessing and favor and abundance. So rest. Enjoy in it, you know. Don't be so, like, all wound up and crazy, you know. You earned it for sure. Um... Let's see, what else do we have here? And it's funny because you guys also have purpose, depth, and roots, which kind of reminds me here of strength. Like, you have strength in your purpose. And I feel like three years from now, you guys are definitely going to be living out whatever your purpose is. And I feel like this union with this person is definitely a part of that purpose. But, um, you know, it could be more so, you know, three years from now, um, there could be like a career related endeavor that you're going to be exploring and participating in. And it could be even tied to your person. It could be tied to your union. Um, I also feel like, you know, it could be other things for you guys too. You know, you guys um, may have families three years from now and that could be your purpose. Because like I said, you guys do have the children card. I'm going to get to that in a minute. But um yeah, you guys are going to be living out your purpose, whatever it is that, that looks like for you. And, um, you know, once again, we have attraction, intrigue, sensuality. So, you know, there's definitely going to be that chemistry between you and your King of Cups, which is just another reason why you guys shouldn't have so much anxiety over the stupid shit that he does. Because, you know what? Okay, you may get frustrated with, with him when, you know, maybe you want to, I don't know, like let's say you want a spoon or something. <laughs> like let's say you just want to cuddle or, you know, you want him to watch a, a rom-com with you or something, you know, something totally girly. Um, and, you know, maybe instead he would, like I said, maybe he'd rather play a video game or something like that. Or watch something else that, you know, is of different taste than yours. But I guarantee, you know, even though you guys may have those small, petty, surfacey differences, it's like when you two are in the bedroom, there is attraction. There is sensuality. There is intrigue. Like, it's not just wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. It's like wham, bam, boom, explode, kaboom type of chemistry. Like... I mean, it's hot, it's fiery, it's passionate. So, like, seriously, you guys, why? Why this? Why this stupid anxiety over stupid crap when most people would kill for that kind of passion that you have with this person? So, like, come on. And the other thing, too, is on the flip side, you guys have all this, like, sexual 
chemistry that is just like beautiful and amazing, but there's depth, you know, once again, going back to depth here, there's depth behind it because you also have like this friendship between the two of you. Not only is this person your lover, but they are also your very best friend. You find support in this person, they find support in you. You know, this person is your lifelong partner, your ride or die, you know, forever, one of a kind type of person. There is a kindness that is shared between the two of you. So, you know, that's like at the very core, at the very depth of it. That's what, you know, that's what winds up making all this heat and passion. That's what winds up turning it into intimacy. As my dog agrees, I'm sorry, there's a guy walking outside and my dog has something to say about it. Please, please don't bark right now. I'm trying to do a reading for the people, so please be quiet. <laughs> anyway, oh man, but yeah, like you put these two together and that's what's true intimacy. Like if you can be friends with someone, like truly be their, like their best friend and have like good conversations and good communication and you know you guys share like those same morals and values and beliefs and everything and at the same time there's that crazy attraction and it's like that animal lust I want you now tear your clothes off kind of thing you know you put the, the two of those together and that's like that perfect intimacy that perfect blissful combination and I feel like you guys definitely have that with your person you're going to be having that with them three years from now so you know like I said when he does stupid shit that's like annoying you know let's say you know he he wants to like go play a sports game or something with his buddies let him just let him let him go have fun with his friends you have your friends too go hang out with them <laughs> so you know like don't get upset over stupid shit like that it's like it's so dumb um so yeah, you know, I, I look at the Jesus card here, heal the sick that they're in and say unto them, the kingdom of God is come nigh unto you. So, you know, he, heal that little part of yourself. Because here's the other thing too, especially if you guys are twin flames. Um, yes, you know, they always say, you know, you have to heal yourself before you enter into union. And I do agree that there is healing that needs to happen. But you're never going to be 100% whole and healed when you enter into union. Because you know what? You're human. We're never made 100% whole and healed until the day we die. Because we're always going through ups and downs in life. There's always going to be things that are going to be making us kind of like, like scuffing our knees through life. So there's always going to have to be something to heal over. Maybe not always big things, maybe not always traumatic things, but there's always going to be something. And especially as long as you are in relationship with other human beings, even if they love you unconditionally, even if they have the best of intentions towards you, they will still disappoint you just because they're flawed, they're human. And here's a newsflash, you're gonna do the same thing to them, to the people that you love and care about. Because like I said, that's just the nature of being a human being. Anyway, um, moving along here, we have new love. Now I know you're like, well, wait a minute, if this is the person I'm already dealing with, why do I have the new love card? Now, honestly, for you guys, I don't feel like this is a new love. What I do feel it is, is where you're going to be at three years from now is going to be a new chapter in your story of love with your particular person. Um, so yeah, it's going to be a new chapter. It's going to be a new beginning. It's going to be like the two of you coming together into union, or maybe you're going to be getting married at that time, or maybe you're going to be moving in together at that time. There's going to be some new level of commitment, um, some new something, like some new beginning that's going to be happening between you and your person. So I do believe that this is the person you're currently dealing with because I know a lot of you guys come to these readings asking about a specific person. So I do believe it is probably going to be that person, um, but it's going to be a new chapter, a new start dealing with that person. And this is probably somebody that you have a past life connection with. 
It's probably someone that, you know, you've done this a million and one times with. And that's just another reason why I feel like this is not like a brand new spanking person. This is um, someone that you're currently dealing with because I feel like even in this lifetime, right here, right now, you guys probably have an expansive past between the two of each other. Now with children, um, I see a couple of different things here. Uh, number one, for those of you who want to have children, well, guess what? Three years from now, you're going to have them. <laughs> you're going to be starting those families with your person three years from now. This is going to be like in the works. It's going to be either happening at that time or it's already going to be starting at that time. But something dealing with kids is going to be going on. Um, but if that's not you, if you're not someone who is interested in having kids, maybe you don't want kids, or maybe you're beyond, like, the age of having kids or anything like that, I see this as, as a couple of different ways. Um, number one, I feel like you guys just kind of, like, bring out the inner child within one another. Um, so I feel like, you know, number one children could be just like your inner children connect connecting and playing and having that you know youthful energy between the two of you you guys make each other feel young and in love once again um either that or your children <laughs> as funny as it sounds um could be in the form of like pets something like that it could be you know fur babies that you guys have or, um, you know, maybe if you already have children or they already have children, you could be combining your families together and making a blended family with your children. So, um, yeah, so children are definitely a factor here. And finally, you guys have playfulness just for fun. And, you know, how convenient is that to have that pop up here with children? Because what are children? Children are playful. They like to have fun. And even the two dogs on the card are a pair of puppies. You know, they're dog children, quite literally. So um, I do feel like for those of you who are going to be on your way to having babies and having children, it's gonna be a playful season. It's gonna be a fun season to play with your kids, you know, especially when they're like in that, you know, little kid stage and everything like that. That stage of life is only there for so long and I feel like you guys are gonna just really treasure that and enjoy that time and be playful with them. And, you know, like I said, if you're not one of those people who are going to be having kids, if that's not your thing, you know, you're going to be having that playfulness between you and your person um, that you guys are going to be playful together with your inner child, with your inner children. So, you know, there's going to be a little bit of playfulness, a little bit of rest. Like this truly is going to be a blessed season, you guys. It's going to be a blessed and abundant season where your dreams are going to be coming true. You're going to be manifesting things. You know, you're going to be the, the wife. You're going to be the mom. You're going to have your family going on. Like, this is, like, a really good three-year prediction. Literally, the only thing standing in your way, like I said, is getting tempted to, you know, get upset over cried, over cried over cried milk. <laughs> Don't cry over spilled milk. That's what I was trying to say. The only thing I see here is you getting upset over like spilt milk over, you know, stupid things really. So trust your intuition here. There really is going to be nothing to be upset because you guys are going to have so much more um, to be happy about than to be upset about. So I would say the reminder is to just Remain thankful, remain grateful, because it probably took you a long time to get to this point. It probably took a lot of work for you guys to get to this point. So um, I would say you guys just be super thankful and, um, you know, rest and be playful, you know, and enjoy those good things. There's so much goodness, you know, enjoy the the friendship that you have with your person and the hot sex that you have with your person, you know, you got some amazing things going on here, guys. So, you know, 
This is a good a good pile to choose from. Not a lot of issues, just you know, a few mental hangups you guys gotta work on. So I just don't wanna see you guys spoil this good season. So I guess that's kind of what the heads up and the warning there was with the devil and nine of swords. But I think that you guys can definitely work it out to the point where we could just whoop, remove these two cards altogether and then you guys would be having just nothing but wonderfulness here. So that's what I see happening for you guys, pile number three and where you're gonna be at three years from now. If the message did not flow, of course, just let it go. But if it did make sense, please let me know. Leave a comment down below. I would love to hear from you. Even just a simple little emoji totally helps me out. Um, also, you guys, please give this video a big thumbs up. That definitely helps me out a lot. Feel free to subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you know of future videos when they are on the way. Um, otherwise, you guys, I'm just super grateful, super thankful that you stopped on by today and spent a little bit of time with me here at this reading. And um, yeah, I hope you have an amazing day. Keep sparkling. I'm sending you lots of hugs and much love.